Continuing from my previous video, building multi-tenant node red dashboard 2.0, where I created a dashboard that multiple clients can access without interfering with each other. In this video, I will show you how to create flow context data that adapts to each user based on their unique socket ID, ensuring that each client's data remains separate and independent. Before getting started, make sure you have watched my previous video and installed the at flowfuse slash node red dashboard 2 user add-on module. As an example, I will add a drop-down node to the editor and configure it with multiple options for users to select. In this case, I will create four options, option number one to option number four. Each user's selection will be processed independently within the flow. Next, add a change node to set a flow variable named option. This variable will store the value received from the drop-down node's payload, allowing us to track the user's selection within the flow. Next, I will add a button node, which will act as a trigger to retrieve the stored value from the flow context variable named option. When the button is pressed, it will fetch the saved option and display it in a text node on the dashboard. This ensures that users can see their previously selected option when interacting with the dashboard. Next, add a text node to display the data retrieved from the flow context variable. After the button node, insert a change node to fetch the stored value from the flow context variable and move it to the payload. This ensures that the text node will display the value stored in the flow context, allowing users to see their selected option when the button is pressed. Next, as an additional feature, I will add another button node that will be used to clear the data displayed in the text node. When this button is pressed, it will reset the flow context variable and update the text node to show an empty value. This ensures users can reset their selection whenever needed. Next, in the right pane of Dashboard 2.0, go to the Client Data tab. Make sure that the FlowFuse user is listed, and check all the nodes under the Accept Client Data section. This ensures that the flow can properly handle user-specific data for each client. After deploying, let's test the dashboard. On the dashboard, I will select an option from the drop-down node. In the debug messages, we can see the output from the drop-down, which includes a underscore client message containing the socket ID. Additionally, in the flow context data, we can see that the flow option variable is set to match the selected option chosen by the user. I will now try using a different browser and select an option from the drop-down node. In the flow context data, we can see that the value of the option variable has changed according to the second user's selection. However, when we check the debug messages, we can see that the socket ID is different for each user. This confirms that the flow context data is shared across all socket IDs, meaning it is not user-specific but global for the entire flow. To address this, I will replace the change node with a function node, which will be used to store the flow context data based on the socket ID received from the drop-down node. Here is the code inside the function node. In this function, I create a flow context variable named user sessions, which stores data in a key value format where the socket ID is the key and the selected drop-down value is the value. This ensures that each user's selection is stored separately, preventing data from being shared across different clients. Now, let's test the dashboard again. As the first user, I will select an option from the drop-down node, and we can see in the flow context data that there is a variable named user sessions, which contains the socket ID and the payload value from the drop-down. As the second user, I will open the dashboard in a different browser. I select an option from the drop-down node, and in the flow context data, we can see that the user sessions variable has been updated with a new socket ID and its corresponding selected value. With this approach, we can create flow context data that is stored separately for each user based on their unique socket ID. Now that we can store flow context data based on socket ID, I will demonstrate how to retrieve the stored value using a button node as a trigger. First, delete the previous change node and add a function node. The following code inside the function node will fetch data from the flow context variable based on the socket ID received from the button node and display it in the text node. With this setup, when the button node is pressed, it will trigger the function to look up the stored drop-down selection in user session's flow context data for the corresponding socket ID and display it in the text node. Next, let's run the dashboard. 
We can see that when a user selects an option from the drop-down node and clicks the button to display the selected value in the text node, the displayed value is based on the user's socket ID. This means that if two or more users access the same dashboard, the values displayed will be different for each user, corresponding to their individual selections. Since each user accessing the dashboard from a different browser is assigned a unique socket ID, their data remains separate and does not interfere with others. Using the same concept, I made a slight modification. Instead of using a button node as a trigger to retrieve the flow context data, I will now use a looping mechanism to continuously fetch the data at a specified interval. With this approach, we can continuously retrieve flow context data for different socket IDs at regular intervals, ensuring real-time updates for each connected user. On the dashboard, we can see that after a user selects an option from the drop-down node, the system starts looping every 5 seconds to display the selected option for each user based on their socket ID. This ensures that the data is continuously updated in real-time, reflecting each user's selection independently without affecting others. In a real-world scenario, I have a real-time OEE monitoring system that continuously tracks and displays OEE metrics. Each user can select a production line and machine they want to monitor, and the system will automatically display the real-time OEE data for the selected machine. However, the problem arises when multiple users are using the dashboard simultaneously. If one user selects a different machine, the displayed OEE data updates for all users, causing everyone's screen to change instead of remaining user-specific. This happens because the flow context data is shared globally, rather than being stored separately for each user. Here is the node red flow code. When a user selects a machine, the system retrieves the selected ID underscore machine and stores it in the flow context variable named ID underscore machine. To refresh the data automatically, an inject node periodically fetches the ID underscore machine from the flow context data and updates the OEE data at a defined interval. However, since flow context data is global, if another user selects a different machine, the display will change for all users instead of being user specific. Using the same concept I explained earlier, I modified the node red flow. After the user selects a machine name, the system retrieves the ID machine from PostgreSQL database. The ID machine is then stored in the flow context data, mapped to the corresponding socket ID, under the variable socket data. Next, a trigger node runs at a set interval, continuously fetching data. A function node retrieves the ID machine based on the socket ID of each user. This ensures that each user gets an independent OEE data display without being affected by other users' selections. Here is the result of the dashboard. For example, the first user selects machining machine number 1, and the system continuously updates and displays its status in real time. The displayed data includes key OEE metrics such as availability, performance, and quality, ensuring the user gets up-to-date monitoring without interruptions. Since the flow context data is stored based on socket ID, this real-time status remains specific to the first user and does not affect the data displayed for other users. In this example, two users are accessing the real-time dashboard simultaneously. When each user selects a different machine, the data displayed on their respective dashboards is also different, reflecting the specific machine they chose. Since the system stores machine selection data based on socket ID, each user receives real-time OEE data that is unique to their selected machine, without interfering with other users' views.
In conclusion, by leveraging Socket ID-based flow context data, we can ensure that each user gets a personalized real-time dashboard experience. Unlike the default global flow context, which affects all users, this approach allows each user to independently select and monitor their preferred machine without disrupting others. With this method, the system continuously retrieves and updates real-time OEE data specific to each user's selection, making it ideal for multi-user environments where individualized monitoring is crucial. This technique can be further expanded to various real-time applications, ensuring efficient, scalable, and user-specific dashboard interactions. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.